Hello children, how are you doing today? Let me think you're still fine. Please follow the SOPs. COVID is real, COVID kills. So P5 class, we are here again to continue from where we ended in the first lesson. Remember in the first lesson, we looked at finding fractions and angles of rotation. And in that lesson, we looked at the degrees that make a complete turn. If I'm to remind you, we said a complete turn is made up of 360 degrees. Therefore, without wasting time, today we are going to look at angles on a compass. Children, primary five, we are looking at angles on a compass. Therefore, when we are handling angles on the compass, we have to look at the directions given. If they give you only the cardinal points, your compass should show only four points, meaning it should show only the cardinal points of a compass. And when the directions given to you in the question have the same cardinal points, your compass should show the same cardinal points too. So we are going to look at example number one, which is saying, study the compass direction below. Children, when we observe the compass direction shown on the chalkboard, we are seeing that they showed only the cardinal points. When I talk of the cardinal points, I mean the north, the south, west, and east. Therefore, after studying it very well, we seeing some questions following the compass. Question A is saying, what is the smaller angle between north and east? Children, what is the smaller angle between north and east? When they talk of the smaller angle, it means the shortest distance somebody can move between north and east. The shortest distance you can cover between north and east. When you look at my campus direction properly, children, I've labeled the shortest distance between north and east with a dotted arrow. The shortest distance between north and east has been shown with a dotted arrow. And when we observe the angle between the north and east, is a right angle. Therefore, the smaller angle between north and east is 90 degrees because between north and east we sing only one right angle. Are there are children? Okay, so after that we're going to look at part B. What by part B is saying, what is the bigger angle between north and east? Uh -huh. Here in the question, they use the word bigger, but we can also use the word larger to mean the same. So when they talk of the bigger angle, they mean the portion that you can move and you feel like you've moved and you feel like taking some water, you're really tired. Because if you are two people, one uses the shortest distance, that one will reach earlier. But this one who uses the bigger angle or the larger angle will move and get even tired. So when we go back to our compass, when we go back to our compass, we'll look at the larger angle between north and east. So that arrow that is showing, the arrow which is not dotted, is showing the larger angle. And when we look at it critically, we're seeing three angles shown there, three right angles. Remember, children, each right angle contains 90 degrees. So we are going to observe the three right angles that have been there. And in our working, we shall say 90 degrees, that is the first angle from east to south, then plus 90 degrees from south to west, then plus 90 degrees from west to north. Therefore, when we add those three 90s, we shall end up with the 270 degrees. But to people who know how to multiply very well, we count the number of spaces that we have. 
So when we observe critically, the bigger angle contains three spaces. But remember, each space is made up of 90 degrees. Therefore, we can multiply 90 degrees times 3, which gives us 270 degrees. Children, the bigger angle is 270 degrees. After that, we are going to go to example number two. What by example number two is saying, what is the smaller angle between east and southwest? I repeat, what is the smaller angle between east and southwest? When I look at this question critically, I'm seeing that they gave us a cardinal point and a semi-cardinal point. When I talk about semi-cardinal point, southwest is a semi-cardinal point. So as we draw our compass, we are supposed to indicate the semi-cardinal points of the compass. And remember, with the cardinal point, each space is showing a right angle. Now with the semi-cardinal point, each space is divided into two. There are for the spaces that are shown on the compass, where the semi-cardinal points are shown. Each space contains 45 degrees. Now when you go back to the gist of the question where they say the smaller angle between east and west, I use the pink arrow, I use the pink arrow to show the smaller angle between east and southwest. When you follow that pink arrow, you see that we have 345. So those who use repeated addition can say 45 degrees plus 45 degrees plus 45 degrees. And when we add those three, we end up with 135 degrees. To those who multiply, they will say we have 45 degrees because I said each space contains 45 degrees. So you will get 45 degrees times the three spaces that are covered by the smaller angle. So 45 degrees times 3 still will give us 135 degrees. So I felt like not leaving that question without looking at the bigger angle. Whereby example number 2 question B is saying what is the bigger angle between east and southwest? Children, what is the bigger angle between east and south west we are going to come back to our compass starting our journey from the east to the south west meaning this time we are going to move and clockwise we are going to start from east because they want a bigger angle we are starting from east to the south west when we are looking for the bigger angle we moved Clockwise. When I talk of clockwise and anticlockwise, clockwise is the forward movement. Anticlockwise is the backward movement. Therefore, this time we are using the backward movement. The, the forward movement can easily be seen using our clock faces. If you have a, a clock face in the sitting room, it shows the clockwise movement. But the anticlockwise movement you move backwards. So we are starting from east to southwest. That is the part that shows the bigger angle. So when I count the number of spaces that I have from east to southwest moving anticlockwise, I have five spaces. And remember, every space that you see there is containing 45 degrees. There are four children, get 45 degrees times 5. Children have said, get 45 degrees times 5. Don't ask me why I've got the 5. I've said, let's count the spaces from the east to the southwest. So 45 times 5. When I multiply here 5 times 5, I'll get 25. I'll put the 5 down and I keep that 2. Then 5 times 4 will give me 20. Plus the 2 I kept up, that will make it 22. So when I add the, whole, the number together, I'll get 225 
degrees. Children, observe my examples properly. You can also try out on the ground and draw a compass. Give set for yourself a question. If you have a big sister, I can guide you on finding the bigger and larger angle. After you observing our examples very well, we are going to do the activity that has been given to us. What well, by activity number one is saying, what is the smaller angle between north and west? Then number two, what is the larger angle between south and east? Then number three, what is the smaller angle between southwest and southeast? Question four, what is the bigger angle between southwest and northeast? Number five, what is the larger angle between east and northwest? Number six, what is the larger angle between southwest and north? Then number seven, find the larger angle between southwest and west. Then lastly, what is the smaller angle between northwest and the southeast? East. So children using the best handwriting write that work. Endeavor to draw the compass on each and every question. But remember in mathematics as we draw diagrams we use pencils. Make sure you identify the key word in the question. In this, I mean, if they ask for the smaller angle, please, the smaller angle becomes the keyword, and then the two directions given to you. I wish you the best. Stay safe.